Daniel Joseph Buckley was born on August 3, 1890, in King Williamstown, Town Court, in County Court, Ireland. He was son of Daniel Buckley Sr., the town's baker, and Abigail Sullivan. Daniel was a farm laborer in Ireland. He, along with his childhood friends, Bridget Bradley, Nora O'Leary, Patty Connor, and Jim Connor, all sought for a new life of higher paying jobs in America, the land of opportunity. They were a part of the second wave of post-famine Irish immigration that occurred between the years 1855 and 1921. This was due to the changing rural economy of Ireland, lure of high paying jobs in America, and potential civic freedom. Many of these Irish immigrants settled in areas such as Boston, New York, and Chicago. They often got paid more than other groups of immigrants due to their native English tongue. This Irish youth philosophy was demonstrated in Daniel's statement after the disaster in the U.S. inquiry. He stated the following, I wanted to come over here to make some money. I came into the Titanic because she was a new steamer. Titanic passenger arrangement was divided into three different classes, the first, the second, and the third. The first class were often the most affluent individuals and had the best accommodations. The second class was mostly mid-range teachers, authors, and the third class were immigrants and laborers who often stayed in the stairs of the boat. Of course it is important not to fall into any generalizations and note that there were exceptions. It is indicative to note that out of the 107 Irish passengers on board, only five were not on third class. This is a good indication of Irish economic and class status during the early 20th century. While one may never know for sure what exactly occurred during Daniel Buckley's time on the Titanic, what we do have are primary documents such as his testimony in the U.S. Senate inquiry, as well as his letter written on the Carpathia and other letters that follow, and other witnesses' documents, and letters. According to these documents, Daniel Buckley's time on the Titanic went as follows. He was sleeping in his room and heard a grinding noise. He arose and felt small amounts of water on the floor. He, is, he alerted his friends and they apparently laughed at him. Then Buckley went upstairs to see what was going on and heard a sailor shouting, All up on deck unless you want to get drowned! He then raced down towards his room in an effort to get a life vest, however, saw that the water was now too high to get down beneath it. Consequently, Daniel made his way back upstairs and from his account, a sailor or someone of the sort had locked the door and barricaded the third class members from getting upstairs. According to Daniel's account, this lock was eventually broken off. This incident was brought up in both the US and British inquiries. Daniel was questioned about the event and stated that it had occurred. Oddly enough, he replied that the third class had just as much chance as to get to the lifeboats as the other classes. The British inquiry had a final report on third class complaints and discrimination and stated the following. There is no truth the impediment of third class passengers to lifeboats or any other discrimination. They account the third class high casualty rate due to third class members inability to desert possessions and objects and stay with the boat. According to Buckley's account, he jumped on a lifeboat with men after the women had boarded. A few sailors then drew their pistols and fired above the men demanded they get off. Buckley was next to a woman who he mistakenly identified as Mrs. Asher, and she said the following, You're somebody's son, and then covered him with a lady's shawl or cloth. This became a part of a legend of the man who was disguised as women during the Titanic, but it was more of a myth than the actual. Daniel and the others in his boat were rescued by the ship Carpathia. He then lived in New York for the next few years, living with his relatives, and he worked at a hotel. At the same time, Buckley was looking for his financial relief. Another imposter, self-proclaimed Daniel Buckley, was receiving money from the charitable relief. According to the newspaper, the two 
were brought face to face until the imposter was revealed as a high grade imbecile and put in the hospital of feeble minded children on Randall's Island. Daniel volunteered to fight in the First World War in 1917. He was in Company K of the 165th U.S. Infantry Unit on the, 19th, on the 69th Regiment. This regiment was primarily Irish immigrants. During the time of war, he sent back much of his salary to his parents, wrote about his experience in the Titanic, and also fought in the Balkans and France while receiving medals for doing so. Buckley would eventually get sustained wounds, die from sustained wounds from a sniper while retrieving a wounded soldier on the Western Front in October 1918. His remains were then transferred to Ireland, where the other Irish Titanic survivors are memorialized. Rest in peace, Daniel Joseph Buckley.